Well, the junkyard. I guess you could call this area the first dungeon. Uh, actually, dungeon is too predictable a term for this game. Let's call it a stompery. The first stompery. Like I said earlier, you'll nearly always be able to spot enemies from afar and, if necessary, take precautions in how you equip your party members. The enemies here are nearly all alley goons, so I'll be zipping through a lot of the fights. But I do have a few things to show off. Number one, of course, being Grumpos' fighting style. Let's start with his battle skill, which is called Yammer. What this does is stun the enemy for a while. He can't attack or do anything until the effect wears off or until you attack him. This lets you take enemies out of the fight when you're dealing with a group of them, or line up an attack from several party members at once, or give you breathing room to use an item like this. Now unlike Boots, Grumpos is a melee fighter, so he has to be within one square of range of an enemy to hit them. That makes him a little bit less versatile as a fighter, but luckily, when he hits, he hits pretty hard. Huh, that actually didn't do as much damage as I was expecting. Oh well, we'll let Boots clean up. Alright, time to explore. Despite the Eddie knows comments, this isn't the right way to find Eddie. But there is something else worth wasting time on. Let's just go through this sewer pipe. Don't look down. Another one of those bug mounds. This one's bright blue. Whoop. Gorite's are the other type of enemy you'll face in the junkyard. They have a melee and a ranged attack, but they're not very sturdy. I'm trying to bait him to attack here, but he's a wimp. Let's dust him. Those Brevulons upstairs wanted the crystal tree, but how to tell which one is the right one? These other Gorites appear to be pretty mellow. Sorry for being sacrilegious, guys. I'll just... <clears throat> shove that in my pocket. Hey, I need it. For money. Let's run back up and continue on through the junkyard.
Something useful here. Another pre-owned shield cell. Maybe I shouldn't have bothered buying one at Zordos. Despite the animations, these goons are unfortunately not fighting each other. Huh, never noticed before that the Bindleback makes a fart noise when it whiffs. I'm letting Boots' Bouge Bar climb up so I can show off his new battle skill. Flashblind has the same stunning effect as Yammer. They might be entirely the same in effect and duration, though Grumpus' version seems to take less time to charge up. I'm being an idiot here, I should have flashed the guy on the right. Grumpus can't reach that one anyway, so we could have teamed up against the left goon. Speaking of Grumpus, whoa, bit of an animation glitch there. I think we've played around enough, time to get serious. That fight took kind of a toll on our dudes. Let's heal up. We'll let Grumpo's lead for a while. In combat situations, there's not really any effect to letting another character lead, except that if you win, the game will usually play a victory animation for the leading character. That Gorite is kind of a problem for Grumpo's right now, since he has ranged attacks and Grumpo's doesn't. Luckily, this alley goon is dumb enough to break the line of sight. Yeah, there you go. Ah, some more animation glitching here. At this point in commentating, I've been told that locking the frame rate can sort that out, so I'll start giving that a try. These guys on the left can just be ignored, they are not in your way. Still, let's send them to go live on a farm. You probably know how this one turns out. The junkyard's not all that big compared to some of the next dungeon areas, but it's big enough when it's your first time through. And once again... Here's a heal here just out of reach. Not the first time we've seen an object that's too high up to grab. A future party member can help us get this, but there's no way I'm coming back here later and fighting my way through just to collect the heal crease. Before we head up this slope, let's explore the bottom. Another taco. Last battle, a trio of Gorites. Unfortunately, they're all kind of far away for Grumpos. Unfortunately for them, their health sucks. Let's try and make quick work of this. I think I mentioned it before, but when your characters use bindle bags, they can't miss. It's curtains for you guys. Yeehaw! If we'd fought our way through here without the nasty sock, this guy would be telling us he won't let us in until we get Eddie something. 
Got it, Moop. Grumples will wait for Boots here. Looks like we have competition. Nick Deedle. The gnaw stealing type. Oh, man. He knows, man. I'm actually more interested in what's behind you. Washe, a fist in three beam. That's an upgrade to Boots' current weapon. We go from a barely working bad gun to a poor gun. Baby steps. I am unable to fully express my revulsion. Enough of these clowns. Time to cut in line. Eddie, by the way, is voiced by Tom Hall himself. Nash them snappers, kid. I got a sock that eats like a meal. Outstanding. Most excellent. This putrid, unwashed, pus-soaked, blood-crusty sock was fermenting around a gangrenous stump of a foot for eight and a half months. This is the chewiest, smelliest sock you'll ever have the luck to nosh on. And you're just a short Q&A away from sucking this baby dry. <clears throat> Sir, we're all impressed by the sock, but there are rules here, procedures. Wait your turn! Hey, behind the yellow line. You hear me? Get your butt back there. You can't just barge in without a number, sir. We have to wait outside. No! Let him ask. Let him ask. I'm trying to sneak into the Mistech tunnels, but someone's bolted a methadine doorboard to the entrance. Happen to know an easy way around it? You must give Eddie the sock before he will answer. What? Forget it, then. Eddie's mind is overpopulated with information. Chewing helps him focus. It allows him to sort through the overwhelming data in his brain and pinpoint specific strands of thought. 
It's the only way he can concentrate. Sounds like a scam to me. Thanks anyway. Fatima. What did you say? Fatima. Mm -hmm. Who's Fatima? Oh, how do you know about Fatima? <laughs> Much pain. Much pain. Eddie's gift is strong. Storlord has secret about brother. Very secret. Incriminating. You found dirt on his brother, huh? So you suggest blackmailing my way into the case? Mm, blackmail, unnecessary secret, unnecessary knowledge of brother is enough. Well, I no. guess, if you say so. Trust in Eddie will not be Skype. Okay, people, okay. Can we wrap this up, please? Eddie's got a lot of subjects left to see today, and we're way behind schedule. Hey, quit pushing, Funky. I'm history. Thanks for the help, Eddie. Don't go changing. No respect for pageantry. Next! And there we are. No great revelations or anything. We just tell the door lord that you know, we know. Unfortunately, what we also don't get is a convenient shortcut to the start of the junkyard. Or they might have ended the cutscene with Boots and Grumpos walking back. Bit of an oversight. Well, we're done. Never coming back here again. Or I guess Grumpos is staying. First things first, let's deliver that symmetrical crystal tree to the cooks. I will. I'll get out of here before they want me to get those as well. I've got nothing else to do but proceed, so we'll head over to the tunnel access and talk to the Mephodine door lord about his secret. Oh yeah, we know. I'm feeling kind of bad about this. Poor guy. And there we go. do. Oh. Alright, let's get down there. Come under one of Boots's boots. That's such a cute detail. Warning. Warning. Transition major of plate section C, D, E, and F. There we go, the Mystic Tunnels, from one stompery into the next. <laughs> 